welcome back. Today I am doing my second video trying out Korean makeup. If you missed the first one, it'll be linked in the description bar down below. I'm so excited to be doing this video today though because you guys really seem to enjoy it and I loved filming it and this video has actually been in the works for like months. I've been planning this since before Christmas but my first package of Korean makeup actually got lost so I had to wait for the placement. I was out of town, you guys know. And on the last video, a lot of you guys said you wanted to actually see how the makeup wore which totally makes sense. So I'm going to do this a little bit different today. I'm going to do a check-in at the end of the day showing you guys how everything is held up and then I also am going to try out this all clean balm by Hamish you guys know I'm a sucker for cleansing oils and balms and everything so I'm going to show you guys how everything wore and then test this out too so this video is probably going to be very long one last thing before we get started all of these products were sent to me from stylekorean.com and they will be linked in the description bar but this video is not sponsored but let's go ahead and get into it today I'm going to be using the Misha layer blurring shimmer primer so this is just supposed to be like an illuminating primer I'm not gonna lie the Shimmer in the name kind of scares me. I also did try to get a different variety of brands this time because in my last video I had a lot of Tony Moly and Etude House. The formula of this feels great. It feels very, very hydrating and it's not actually shimmery at all. Kind of reminds me of the L'Oreal Magic Lumi Primer but not as oily feeling. For foundation, I picked up the Etude House Big Cover Concealer BB. This looks exactly like the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation. It's got that like oversized doe foot applicator on it. I'm just gonna start dotting this all over my face. I'm not actually sure what shade I picked up because everything on here is in Korean, but I'll have it in the description bar. I did pick this once again back in December before I knew I was going on vacation, so it might not match me. And I'm just gonna go ahead and blend this out with my L'Oreal Foundation Blender. is definitely too light for me like I was saying I think it would definitely be a better match when I don't have a little bit of a tan which I know on camera I just look pale but you can definitely see it's lighter than my neck and chest I really don't care if it's too light I'll put on a little bit of bronzer I'll put on a turtleneck and we'll be fine it'll wash off at the end of the day that being said I'm pretty happy with the formula it was a little bit patchy like I had a little bit of issues blending it out and I feel like it's not totally even in some areas but the coverage is really good it didn't quite cover up like my really red spots on my face like this little scab I have here and a little blemish I'm also pleased that it's not too like wet and dewy looking because a lot of Korean complexion products are that kind of finish just because that's what they're into. Moving on to concealer, I got the Nature Republic Cream Concealer. Once again, don't know the shade at the moment, but it'll be down below. I'm going to use it under my eyes. I usually don't use tube concealers because they tend to be thicker, but I wanted to mix it up and try something different. So I'm going to dot a little bit under each eye. I think I did look at the description of this and it said it was for the eye area too, and that's why I chose it. But I don't know. Concealers like this are always just so thick. This does seem to be blending out really well though. I do still have like a little scab and flaky patch here from when my skin got a little bit sunburnt on vacation. So if you see that red dot, that's what that's from. It's kind of hard to cover up. So the concealer did surprisingly well with the sponge. It didn't give me too many issues blending out. It does feel like very thick and tacky though. And it is starting to crease just the slightest bit. I feel like it didn't give me enough coverage. Like I don't feel like I look nice and awake and like that area doesn't look as bright as I would like it to. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use a cream highlighter because I got this Tony Moly spoiler strobing cushion. I'm just gonna take a little bit on my finger and just kind of dab it on. It felt kind of dry at first, but I'm getting more product now. Ooh, that's really pretty. I'm not sure how well this is going to blend out over that kind of tackier concealer sealer but the effect is like really soft and kind of pearlescent probably gonna do a tiny bit more of this after I've set my face into my powder products just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more I feel like products like this are always best for like really light natural kind of makeup looks but I think it is pretty I'm going to quickly prime my lids and do my brows off camera to save some time because brow pencil is like the one thing I didn't get a Korean product for brows are done now I'm going to go ahead and powder everything I got the Innisfree no sebum mineral powder I believe a couple of you guys recommended this on my last Korean makeup video and it was already on my radar so I'm excited to try it. One thing I will say is that this is so tiny. It comes with a little poof. But like, look how small this is. And I looked it up and it said 20 grams of product comes in here, but I feel like that must be wrong because like my Dermablend powder is 28 grams. I'm like, there's no way this little bit of powder is 20 grams. That being said, this powder is like less than $6. So I don't know. Still seems like not that much product. I'm going to set my entire face with this. The foundation has definitely started to crease around my mouth and I'm just generally 
not in love with the overall look of it. Like I said, it just seems very patchy. This powder does have a scent too. I saw online it says it has green tea and mint in it. Now that the face is powdered, let's zoom in and do some eye makeup. I'm going to start with this little look at my eyes, Tony Boli eyeshadow. Online this definitely looked darker. I thought it would be more of a transition shade, but it is quite light, so I'm just going to put this all over my lid as a base. This is hard to show because it's super reflective, but I picked up this eyeshadow palette from the brand I'm Meme. And this is what the shades look like. Really pretty. I do have kind of like a transition shade in here. I'm going to start off by using this as my transition shade. On my last video, you guys let me know that Korean shadows aren't typically super pigmented just because, once again, as a Korean makeup trend, they like more kind of like natural eye looks. I've definitely set my pigmentation expectations lower this time. Next, I'm going to take this orange shade and just blend that into my crease as well. Definitely more on the sheer side. I'm not loving this shadow. It seems quite chalky and dry. There seems to be like a lot of like glitter falling out from it. I'm also going to take the brown shade and add a little bit of this to my crease on a slightly smaller brush. Okay, I do not like these shadows at all. They are depositing hardly any color and when they do it's very harsh and like blotchy and hard to blend out and I'm getting a ton of fallout. For one last ditch effort to see if I can make these work, I'm going to spray my brush with a little bit of setting spray and pick up the purple shade and try and put that on my lid and see if that helps even a little bit. I have a feeling this is just going to make more of a mess. Oh my god. It's definitely making the shadow more intense. But it's just like very crumbly and chunky. Thank god I don't have anything important to do today, you guys. This palette is covered in like powder fallout and glitter. So is my face. Really don't like these eyeshadows. I'm gonna clean this all up, set this with my NYX contour kit, and do a little bit of this on my lower lash line, and I will be right back. So I think this is basically as much as I can salvage it. Like I said, I just cleaned up that eye area, but you can see there's still like a patch of orange right here. And they're just so patchy and dry. I just kept going back in with that matte shade and just really trying to blend out the edges. It definitely took away some of the harshness but it's just still so patchy and so awful looking. I think I'm honestly just gonna go back over the lid color with this matte shade. Like I'm just gonna basically blend that all over the lid. My lids literally just look like swollen and irritated. Moving along to a product I pray to god works better because I'm actually really hopeful for this. This is the Root Curl Mascara from Skin Food. On the packaging it says it gives your lashes a one day perm. The one is quite skinny with a very slight curve and very short little natural bristles. I already curled my lashes on this eye as you can see. So we're gonna start applying this. I really hope this works because you guys know I have the straightest eyelashes on the planet so That's really like the only main thing I look for in mascaras. It does seem to dry really quickly I think you need to work quite fast with it. I'm assuming that's what gives it the curling effect I definitely don't think it's gonna be a good mascara though if you want to do like multiple coats I actually quite like the look and effect it's giving me. It's a little bit clumpy towards the ends But overall I like the look that it gave my lashes. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye now I'm gonna speed this part up So that's the lashes. I actually quite like this mascara and as long as it continues to hold a curl like this I think I'll be pretty pleased with it. One thing, once again, it just dries really quickly so you have to work very fast with it. And like I got a little dot here on my lid and like it's just like so set in there I can't remove it with a q-tip. So you gotta work fast but also be careful at the same time which is kind of a downside. On to the face. For bronzer and contour I picked up this little compact from Too Cool For School. This is called the Art Class by Rodin. It's like a little contouring product which I think is so funny because we're all sculptors when we're contouring our face, right? They all are pretty cool tone, so I'm not sure how this is going to work for bronzer. A little bit on the like drier side for the formula and just a little bit difficult to blend but it definitely added some much needed like contour and definition back to my pasty face and I think the shade actually looks pretty good even though it's more cool tone and I'm more used to like a warm tone bronzer I think it looks okay for blush I got this skin food rose essence blusher it comes in a little tin and that's what the blush looks like it is quite a vibrant pink kind of hard to order this stuff online because the stock photos aren't always the truest to color I definitely thought it wasn't like a super cool tone pink like this I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of the strobing cushion and dab a little bit of this onto my cheeks and see if it does 
okay over top of powders. My skin definitely, I feel, looks very matte and ashy, so I want to get some kind of glow going on. Finally, we have made it to lips. I'm going to be using this April Skin Fixing Tint. I thought this was going to be more of a lip stain, but it looks to be like a liquid lipstick, and it's in like a very peachy orange color, which I thought was going to go better with the eyes, but since it's so like washed out, this is probably gonna look a little bit crazy, but I do have to say the packaging on this is beautiful. This is so thick, I really am not enjoying the texture of it. I do not like the texture of this at all. It is so thick and goopy. It's so hard to get like a clean line because the applicator is quite like fluffy. It's super patchy if you can't tell. The texture is just weird and obviously the color is just like so much with this like super light kind of like wash out makeup. When I put my lips together it gets that like tacky like peeling apart kind of feeling. I am not too happy with this round of trying to read makeup you guys. I definitely preferred all of the products in my last video better and just the finished look in general. But I mean I'm gonna zoom in and do a close up for you guys and I will check in at the end of the day and kind of collect my thoughts share my final thoughts on all of these products and then we're gonna take it off with the cleansing balm once again so it has been seven and a half almost eight hours and I'm just dying to wash my face you guys I am not happy with the overall makeup look I look tired I look ashy I look blotchy it is just not doing it for me, so I think it's time to call it a day and wash everything off. First of all, I did not keep the lip product on for very long at all. I hated this. It felt so gross on my lips, I had to remove it. But it was the hardest lip product I have ever had to remove. Like, imagine the hardest liquid lipstick to remove, but like magnify that times 10. It was awful. You can see even after like nearly a full day, there's still remnants of it around my lips even after eating. I had to seriously scrub at my lips. Like even coconut oil was barely breaking it down. So really don't like this. Did not like the eyeshadow palette either. As you guys know, I think I'm just honestly not even going to keep either of these. The products that I did think were good were the strobing cushion. Once again, just for more light, natural kind of makeup days for me at least. I also do like the mascara. The curdle did hold very well. Just a little bit harder to work with. Contouring product was fine, not going to be my top choice by any means, but it wasn't bad. I think the powder was pretty good. I am definitely oilier at this point in the day, but there's not a lot of separation, so I think this definitely helped. It was very matte though, so I would only recommend if you do like a very matte complexion. It's a little bit too matte and dry looking for me. The foundation, I'm gonna say, is fine. It wasn't too bad. It was just kind of patchy and I'm not in love with it. One thing I noticed is that in lower light my face has a very distinctive all over shimmer to it, which I think must be from the primer. I would think it was more like the eyeshadow fallout, but it's on my forehead as well. It's like quite shimmery. So I'm assuming that's from this, which the texture of this was nice, but if it's going to leave my face like super shimmery, I'm not a huge fan of that. Everything else was honestly just like meh, very mediocre. Overall, I'm gonna say this video was a flop. There was a few decent products, but overall there was so many products I didn't like that the makeup look turned out not so great. I'm so ready to remove this though, so I'm going to pull my hair back and we are going to try out the Hamish All Clean Balm. So it's just a white cleansing balm. It looks pretty solid, but it melts pretty well with your fingertips and it feels and looks honestly like coconut oil. It has a very herbal spa kind of scent to it. I'm gonna melt this between my fingers and just start removing my makeup. So it definitely really broke down everything. I'm gonna go rinse this off and cleanse my face and update you guys in a second. So the balm did a really great job removing everything, like every last little trace of mascara. My skin feels very soft and very clean. I think this is probably my favorite product from the whole video, which is kind of funny. My favorite product from my trying Korean makeup video is a skincare product, but I did really like this. Also, in case any of you guys are wondering about the perming thing from the mascara, my lashes definitely don't have any curl now that it's removed, so I don't know if it's really supposed to last afterwards, but it does say one day perm. But yeah, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. I know it was slightly more of a negative video, but that's just what happens when you try a full face of new products at once. There are bound to be some misses, and in some cases, there are a lot of misses. But once again, if you guys didn't see the first Try in Korean makeup video, definitely check it out. I definitely had better luck with more products from that round of testing. So that'll be linked down below with all of the products once again. I hope you guys enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up if you did and if you want to see more of these videos in the future. Go follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. I am at Rihanna on all three. And hit that subscribe button down below if you are new here. But I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye guys.